with these workshops once every six weeks. Uh, the next workshop will be delivered on in February 24th, and then we have another one scheduled at the beginning of March. And they're educational awareness raising uh, workshops, usually for about a 45 minute duration, for which today's event will be 45 minutes uh, in duration. So we'll, we'll wrap up around 9.15, 9.20, we'll see how the presentation is going. For those of you unfamiliar with the Ludgate Hub, the Ludgate Hub is the first rural digital hub situated here in Skibbereen, lovely West Cork. And we opened and commenced business in summer 2016. Um, we're located in Skibreen, as I said, we have a state of the art facility here, 10,000 square feet, um, comprising of a co-working facility, but also uh, second sites have established themselves here. We have private office space. And during our time since 2016, uh, we have welcomed um, many uh, solo entrepreneurs, uh, startups, and we've built out support packages around those uh, particular pillars uh, in order to support uh, those particular businesses. Um, our long-term vision in West Cork for Ludgate is to create a thriving local digital economy. Uh, since we have, we have set up, uh, we have welcomed 120 full-time members. Uh, we have close on 100 part-time members and we have sold 4,000 hot desks. That's something that we are incredibly, uh, incredibly uh, proud of. We've run accelerator programs, we've delivered events both in person and virtual, we've delivered monthly webinars across a wide range of topics. And indeed with the propeller series, we are trying to bring topics and we will bring topics that solve for many uh, and not for one particular industry sector, so there is something for everybody. Uh, we're delighted, as I said, to welcome Marie, Marie Wiseman, a local business of Wiser Marketing here in West Cork, they're a marketing consultancy agency based out of Skibreen, who are offering training advice and practical help in delivering all forms of marketing initiatives, working with micro and small businesses, as well as startups. Marie has designed and deliver, uh, delivered on a number of training programs for private and statutory clients. She is part of the Business IQ training team, where she delivers the marketing strategy, digital marketing and marketing research modules of the local enterprise office Start Your Own Business program, as well as bespoke digital marketing programs. Marie is an approved mentor uh, with Cork North and West and South Cork local enterprise offices. And if all of that is not making Marie busy enough, as is, she's also taken up uh, the role of president of the Network Ireland West Cork chapter for 2022. And just to pause on that, um, from the Ludgate team and from myself, Marie, um, we wish you every success for the coming 12 uh, months as president of that particular chapter. In, th in terms of today's structure, it's a 45 minute webinar. Marie has a very intensive uh, presentation to make her way through, um, for which I do know and I, I feel that it would be very important and you'll pick up a lot of knowledge along the way because it's a, a quite a meaty presentation. Um, we'll allow attendees to engage. There will be a chat box or Q&A box. I would encourage you to put in questions uh, through that box um, over the course of the webinar. And then at the end of the presentation, I will filter through those questions for Marie. Today's event is recorded. It will be available on our events page if people have to hop off at maybe 9 a.m. or so on and so forth. Or if a colleague of yours maybe uh, would like to catch up on this event, it will be available over the coming days through our events page. Um, so I'm very happy to hand it over to Marie Wiseman now of Wiser Marketing and she'll share her screen. Thank you, Fiona. Um, <clears throat> thank you. And I'm absolutely and utterly delighted to be here. So I think everybody can see my presentation. So as Fiona said, um, pretty sort of short time, um, 35 minutes. So um, what I'm gonna cover, I'm just gonna do a little bit of context to start with, just in terms of getting started with your digital media um, plan. Um, then gonna focus quite a lot on social media um, and a few sort of hints and tips there. There's gonna be a small section on website and search engine optimization. And then I'm gonna wrap up just with highlighting some of the free resources that are available to people. So getting started, the, the most important thing um, when thinking about marketing, whether it's digital, whether it's anything else, is really, really think about who it is you're targeting, who is the customer you're targeting. That's very particularly important as well on um, social media because all the different platforms vary quite um, substantially. The second thing would be knowing your com competitors. So having a look at see what other people are doing. That's local competitors that are really com you, you are actually competing with, but also looking at how other businesses like yours, um, what they're doing elsewhere in the country. So, you know, what are similar businesses in Donegal doing? What maybe your businesses over in the UK doing? And just sort of sparking ideas for yourself. 
Thirdly, being very, very clear in terms of what makes you different. Why is somebody going to visit you as a business rather than one of your competitors? So what's your unique selling point? Um, and that's going to form a lot of the basis of, of what you're going to be communicating. And the final thing is, um, you know, starting to really be consistent in your branding as well. So start to sort of, um, you know, have those little touch points that people will think of you when they see a particular color, when they see your logo, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's an awful lot you can do in terms of marketing. There's tons of different social media platforms out there. There's, you can do websites, you can do digital PR, there's awards, blogging, email marketing. It can be very, very um, you know, overwhelming to sort of think, oh my God, I've got to do all of this. You don't, you absolutely do not need to do everything. So it's really thinking about what are those certain um, touch points that are really going to sort of, um, that, that your customer is going to be in first and foremost, um, but they're really going to convert um, sales for you. And also thinking about yourself as well. Where are your um, strengths? So if you know, writing is something that you really enjoy, then maybe a blog would be perfect for you. But actually, if that's going to absolutely, you know, that the thought of it sends shivers up your spine, then absolutely that's not necessary. So it's, it's thinking about those two things together. So definitely, particularly when you're starting out, thinking about what is absolutely and utterly essential for you. So the essentials for me certainly are, and I'll, I'll talk about this in the next slide, is starting to build your profile online. There's a few small things you can do up front that can actually serve you very well. The second thing is social media. Social media will almost always be important for a business. Um, and it, not all the different platforms, but at least one of those platforms. We'll, we'll touch on the differences between them in a moment. Website for a lot of businesses will be important, but my advice would be to push it out as long as you can. There's a lot required in terms of setting up a website, in terms of um, you know, your time, your money, et cetera, and, and not just in setting it up, but actually keeping it going successfully. So my advice would be until you absolutely need it, don't do it. And then there's a lot of other stuff that if you can do it, and if you if you enjoy it, then absolutely do. There's lots of opportunities in the PR. There's awards you can enter, and I would recommend that if you can. Um, and then blogs and email marketing and stuff like that. But again, I'm not going to touch on that today because they're, as I say, nice to do rather than essentials. So I mentioned about building online visibility. It pays to make friends with Mr. Google. So if you have a business that you have a sort of bricks and mortar, absolutely get on Google Maps straight away. Set up a Google My Business account. It will just build a little bit of visibility for you on, online. If there's directories that are relevant to your sector, <clears throat> list with them. They're free. Uh, marketplace websites, similar. And if actually building your own personal profile is important, absolutely play with LinkedIn. It's huge. LinkedIn has 675 million monthly users worldwide. It's huge. And certainly if you're in the business business, Business market, then it's going to be really important. 80% of business to business leads come from LinkedIn. And what it is, it's 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 just a fantastic way of actually building your own personal profile. And um, I would think of it in a way of your personal website. So it's you know how you make your first impression online. And it's a, just an absolutely fantastic tool. So I would recommend it to absolutely everyone. Okay, so moving on to social media. As I mentioned, there are tons of platforms out there and it can be a bit overwhelming thinking, oh my God, I need to be on Instagram because that's what everybody's on. It's, it's thinking about where your customers are. Always, always come back to your customers. So think about them first and foremost. So there's the three biggest ones here in the UK, or sorry, in, in Ireland would be, and um, Facebook is the biggest, sort of the daddy of them all. So um, 3.2 million of us here in Ireland, 65% of us have a Facebook account that we're interacting with on a regular basis. Now the age profile of uh, Facebook is getting older. So typically sort of the, the most active users are actually middle-aged women. So typically if, you're, sort of, if your um, customer is age 40 or, or above, then almost certainly they will be on Facebook. The thing with Facebook as well is that there's a lot of younger people have Facebook accounts and they're using it simply to sort of keep in touch with, um, with people. They're not necessarily massively active on there, but they still are there. So for most businesses, having a Facebook account is going to be important is simply because of its size. Facebook is also getting um, very popular in the older age group as well. Instagram, very different. It's very much about sort of photos and videos and stuff like that. Um, and it's a little bit smaller, about 2 million of us, 39% of us, and a little bit more of a, a female bias. 
The difference between Instagram and Facebook, the biggest difference is age profile. So the majority of Instagram users are under 35. So again, thinking about that, what's the age profile of your target customer? And then Twitter is a completely different animal entirely. So it's a little bit smaller, um, 353 million, and 1.2 million um, here in Ireland. And it's people use it in a very, very different way. So the age profile is probably sort of, um, you know, under, under 50, um, but people are using it just to kind of keep in touch with news, etc. So Twitter can be helpful um, in terms of reaching somebody who may not be engaged on, on Facebook and Instagram. But again, I would sort of, certainly starting out, I would probably start with either Facebook or Instagram or both. The second thing is to be very, very clear in terms of why you're in social media to start with. What is it you're trying to achieve? Social media is absolutely wonderful driving awareness and particularly top of mind awareness. So keeping you at the top of somebody's mind so that even if they're not thinking about purchasing your product or service at the moment, when they do, you'll be there at the top of their mind. So that's that's its real, real beauty. Um, but also it's a fantastic way of you know, engaging with your target market. It's very two way. So it's interactive. Um, it's a great way of obviously sharing information um, and getting to know your customers better as well as they're interacting with you. Thirdly is deciding on what is you want to say? What are the key messages that you've got? So, and again, you know, obviously you're going to be talking about the products or services that you're offering, but also you're going to be focused for sure about, you know, what's the sort of the point of difference that you've got. So it might be that you're trying to get across the fact that you're a real expert. It might be, it might be sort of other softer things as well about sort of, you know, if you're in the service industry, then actually showing you as somebody that's good to work with is going to be nice. So you might be thinking about the tone that you're setting you know, that put coming across is very approachable and, um, you know, like me, as it were. You may be getting across the fact that you're a local um, and, you know, that you really engage in, in here in West Cork, etc. Then thinking about, well, actually, how often do I want to post? And what time of day do I post? Are there certain times, you know, there's certain days of the week that you want to post, etc. The golden rule is there is no golden rule. Um, it really does depend on your business. My advice would be no less than once a week. So, um, and for the majority of businesses, three or four times a week is ample. The key thing is quality versus quantity. So there's no point of just posting just for the sake of it. It's thinking actually, have I got something important to say? But the other final thing here as well is consistency really, really matters on social media. So, you know, my advice would be <clears throat> to think about how many times a week do you want to post? What are the days of the week that you're going to do that? And then stick to that. And also test different times. Um, and again, Facebook is very, very good at the moment in terms of actually giving you some advice on that. And then that'll allow you to sort of build your posting strategy. Um, and this is a posting strategy that, that, you know, a business like mine might have. So I might um, decide, okay, I'm going to post three times a week. That's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, on Monday, I'm going to focus on sort of giving tips and advice so that I'm going to just, you know, show the fact that actually I know what I'm talking about. So I may have certain little things on that. On Wednesday, I might sort of share news that I might have. I might have a new client. I might have a new course coming up, et cetera. And then on Friday, I might actually try and get across the fact that actually, do you know what, I'm a bit like you and I'm nice to work. Sharing things about yourself and being relatively personal um, really does help on social media as well. And there's a little fun fact for you as well, um, which is a very scary fun fact, actually. The average consumer attention span, now just eight seconds. That's actually less than a goldfish. So the next piece is in terms of crafting your messages. So I mentioned there, keeping it real, being yourself. Do show yourself, be, be genuine. Um, it will come across in your messages and share things about your team and so on and so forth. The first line matches. So, you know, we typically consume social media through our phones. So we're scrolling. So you need to grab people's attention. If you've got something important to say, say it immediately. Um, and there's no point in going too lengthy either. Um, Facebook actually recommends no less than, no more than 80 characters, which is similar to what I've got online there. Um, Instagram a little bit more, etc. Um, emojis, yes, use them, but maybe not, not overuse them again, thinking about your audience. Um, and then there's sort of obvious things as well, you know, thinking about sort of not using shouting capitals and so on and checking spelling. Graphics matter hugely. 
so Facebook posts with images get to almost two and a half times more engagement than those without, which is goes to say. If you haven't um, discovered Canva already, I would so recommend it. Absolutely wonderful tool um, that allows you to do graphics very, very easily. The free version is absolutely fine for most people. Um, and you can do video on there and, and lots of other things as well. There's also lots of stock photo sites available out there that, um, that are free. So these Pexels is the one I use the most, um, but there's others out there as well. Video matters even more. Um, so all the different platforms absolutely and utterly love video. And we as consumers are loving video more and more. So they're far more attention grabbing. Um, they're very, very engaging. So you can really sort of build an emotional connection through um, video that, you know, images won't allow you to necessarily do. Far easier to interpret as well. So there's some stats there to sort of um, to prove that. Um, and actually, ultimately, you're going to get um, a greater brand recall by using video. And as I say, very, very good for search engine optimization. All the algorithms love video. And there's um, another little fact so video gets 1200 percent more shares than text and images combined so i mentioned algorithms so algorithms are there basically to stop us being overwhelmed um, as users of social media so if we imagine that i don't know typically we might um follow maybe up to say 200 business pages if every time those business pages put out a post and it entered our feed we would we'd run a mile um, so what at the um, Facebook in particular does is it sets these algorithms so it literally only sort of pushes your post out to the people who follow you that they think um, it would be most relevant to. So what that means is that on average, um, the reach of an organic Facebook post, i.e. unadvertised, is only 5.2%. It's a little higher on, on um, Instagram. So don't be alarmed. Um, there are lots and lots of things that you can do to overcome that. Bear in mind that that is the average. So the most important thing with Facebook is, um, and I'm saying Facebook because Facebook is, is the worst. So if you do it right on Facebook, it stands to reason that it will work perfectly well on, on the others as well. So engagement is any action that somebody takes with your post. So if somebody likes or comments or shares or does something with your post, then actually that counts as engagement. And what that means is that if people are engaging with your post, the algorithm will recognize that. So it may send it out to 5.2% of your followers to start with. But if those 5.2% start to engage with it, then the algorithm will say, okay, that's, that's obviously an interesting post and push it out to another 5.2%. And then if they continue to engage, it'll push it out to more. So basically the more engagement you get, the more of your followers you will reach. And algorithms, algorithms can be trained up or down as well so if you are consistently getting good engagement the algorithm will probably send your post out to far more than 5.2 percent to start with the opposite is also true and the average engagement rate is just 0.25 percent you can do way way better than that so how can you do way better than that? How can you get engagement? Um, the first thing is posting regularly and consistently. It's really, really important. I mentioned earlier about sort of, you know, sticking to your days, sticking to your times, that really matters. So the last thing you want to do is sort of post loads one week and then post nothing for a month. That's, that's not going to help. Encourage interactions. So encourage a bit of banter, encourage people to sort of comment and stuff. Avoid clickbait though. Um, and clickbait is those posts where it says, like, comment and share my post to um, be in with a chance to win. That, that doesn't work too well. Always use graphics or video as we sort of pointed out earlier. Um, and actually, if you've got lots and lots of pictures, it encourages post clicks. That counts as engagement as well. So that would, would prove very good. If somebody um, reacts to your post, follow just uh, sorry if somebody reacts to your post then do respond to it so if somebody shares like the fact that they've shared tag people as well so um anyone who might share your post so the ask a marine page is absolutely fantastic at sharing local posts so and they've got huge numbers of followers at bantry business is another great one so and the final thing here as well is post direct versus sharing so it's okay to share posts from time to time but you'll never reach as many people so um do post direct as well um schedule posts if you can um that a it's got huge numbers of um benefits the most important one being that you can make sure that you're posting at the time that 
your in audience are going to be at their most engaged. Um, and again, that'll vary by brand, but Facebook in particular is very, very good at um, aligning and, and telling you what that might be. It also makes life a lot more manageable and less stressful. So, um, you know, it's it's good to be able to actually create a load of posts in one go and then think, OK, we'll actually um, schedule them. That's it. My social media is done for the week over and above you know, anything that you want to sort of um, spontaneously add to it. Um, you can schedule direct on Facebook and Twitter um, and if your um, Facebook and Instagram accounts are linked, then actually you can um, uh, schedule direct to Instagram through Facebook as well. And then there's other free options out there as well. So there's Hootsuite, um, which allows you to schedule to pretty much any of the social media accounts. I use it for LinkedIn. And then if you do have just an Instagram account, then Later is a really, really good and very easy to use free app. And finally, on social media, do use your insights as well to improve your further your um, future content. Facebook in particular is absolutely brilliant at giving really good insights in terms of, you know, how much um, of your post is reaching. Um, it'll give you sort of um, scores and engagements, um, and it will really help to be able to sort of say, well, actually that sort of post really helped um, or you know when I start a post with this kind of words it seems to really um, work well or video seems to be um, particularly good and, and so on and so forth um, and also you can obviously find information about who your audience is and who your followers are and, and you know, sort of age gender location that kind of thing as well which can also be very helpful so that was a whistle stop tour I hope I'm not speaking too fast um, so just a tiny little bit, as I say now, about website and SEO. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. So as I mentioned, you know, do I would put off starting a website until you really, really need to. As I say, there is quite a lot of um, resource involved in it. Um, so if, if you can get away without it, you know, do is my advice. However, as soon as you have your business name um, and you know what that is, go and buy your domain name. Um, and have it ready and waiting for the day that you do want to actually set up your website. Um, and the reason for that is, is twofold. First and foremost, you want to make sure it's available. Um, so, you know, having it, and it doesn't cost an awful lot of money, 20, 30 quid a year is, is, is typical. Um, but also there are sort of, um, you know, dubious people out there who will actually purchase domain names um, and then try and sell it back to you, and you don't want that. So my advice would be, you know, if the, the .ie and .com are both available. There's no harm at all in purchasing both. As I say, it's not an awful lot of, um, of money and it's well worth it just to sort of um, make sure that you've got it for the future. And do allow for future growth as well. So don't be too limiting in terms of your name. There's lots of different um, hosting options out there. Some of the most um, recommended ones would be Black Knight, GoDaddy, Hosting Ireland. They've got very good reputations. So again, I would stick with good reputation rather than sort of um, cheap deal um, because you want somebody who's going to sort of really support you if, if things go wrong down the future. And then thirdly, choose a platform that's right for you. So um, platform is sort of how the website is created. So WordPress is the most popular, um, but it's a little tricky in terms of if you're going to be doing the updates yourself, there's a little bit involved in it. So if you're not particularly technical, but you know that you're going to be updating your website yourself going forward, then Wix and Squarespace may be um, a better option for you. So again, that's something you can talk to your website developer about. Do choose your website developer as well quite carefully. There's loads of different people out there, all with different skill sets and so on. So do speak to people, get advice, get recommendations, etc. Um, and get a number of different quotes as well, because there, there could be a very, very big difference in terms of that. Um, and do brief them very carefully as well. Give them as much information as you possibly can so that they're very, very clear about what's in your head and, and what good looks like. Good websites. Good website design really does matter as well. It's a ranking factor in SEO. So um, having you know, the, the better designed your website than the, the higher up the search page you will reach. Um, part of that is because a good website design will actually keep people engaged and keep people on your site and that matters. So think about the content. And again, always think about your customer. What's the information they're likely to be looking for rather than necessarily what you want to tell them. Um, so and sort of combine those two. So really think about them. Um, use conversational English rather than sort of um, too many techie words, etc. Pay particular attention to the homepage. That's where the vast majority of people are going to land. Um, so you know you want to make a really good first impression. So get that get that absolutely right, and make it very very easy for people to contact you. That's 
likely to be um, a reason, probably about 50% of people actually go to websites to get contact information. So make it super, super simple for people um, and have that contact information on every single page. And then make sure you're presenting the whole sort of thing in a really nice kind of easy to navigate format as well. Make it really easy for people to sort of find what they need. Search engine optimization, um, it really matters. So I'm, I'm just gonna just touch on this. There's loads of free courses out there um, to, to sort of learn more, but this chart just shows um, on the, the basically, um, so the, the number of clicks on the sort of the first um, organic um, website on a page, you can see there it's like a coming in at over 400,000. That drops to probably about 50,000 um, at the bottom of page one. And as you can see, if you're on page two, three, four, forget it. There's nobody's going to find you there. So it really, really does matter. So what can you do? As I say, I'm only going to touch on this. Um, there's two different things you can do. So there's what's called on-page SEO. So that's stuff that you can do in your own website to sort of um, ensure that it ranks. The most important thing is keywords. So the words that people are going to um, you know, type into the search engine, um, if they're looking for a business just like yours, making sure that those words are featured within your website um, and throughout your website. And also on things like called title tags and meta descriptors, which are basically, you know, the sort of the blue lines of text that come up on a search page, making sure that they're very, very keyword rich as well. Making sure that you're using headings within your website and that they are keyword rich. Um, making sure that, like I said earlier, that your page has really, really good content that people want to see and that, um, that they're actually going to be um, uh, interested in and stay there. Um, search engines can't actually sort of um, make any sense of images. So make sure and actually give them sort of um, alt text stands for alternative text. So give them sort of little titles. It's, it's relatively straightforward to do. Make sure that your, your site loads um, really easily so and, and quickly. So another little stat would be there. 47% of us expect a site to load in two seconds and 40% will leave after three seconds. So if your website is slow, you're going to be losing people. So make sure that's optimized. Um, and one of the things you can do there is make sure you compress images. I mentioned earlier about sort of you know easy navigation between the, all the different pages. So having those sort of internal links working on is important. Obviously, making sure that your um, your website works on a desktop, but also very very importantly that it works just as well on a mobile and tablet, etc. Um, and finally, keeping the site up to date. There's no point, and again, this kind of comes back to my earlier point about you know doing a website when you're good and ready. There's no point in just creating a website and then just leaving it. It needs to be updated on a very regular basis. Um, so again, the search engines will recognize that um, and, um, and yeah, it benefits you. And then there's a few things you can do as well off page. So um, this is really sort of to say about building your site's authority. So having high quality links, um, so links to other websites that make sense for your business, and they may have that they that they themselves you know have good following and good SEO etc. That can really really benefit. So thinking about how you can sort of create those links and who those links might be with. Social media. So the whole piece of digital marketing all works together. So the more active you are on social media and the more sort of followers you're getting and the more engagement and all of that, having links to those pages on your website will absolutely drive SEO for you. So um, making sure those work all together. I mentioned earlier about online visibility, making sure your friends, Mr. Google, that your Google Maps, your Google business account, etc. So um, all of that stuff will also help you. And then anything you can do in terms of the, the PR field as well. So if you're getting talked about, um, you know, elsewhere, then that's going to help. Finally, Google Analytics, these are um, free on all websites and you can set that up for free. And again, there's loads of information on there that you can really you know, use to sort of optimize your website as well. So, you know, understanding sort of, you know, how many people are actually visiting, how many of those are unique and what pages are they visiting, et cetera, how long are they spending on each page and so on and so forth. You know, are a lot of people coming in and then leaving immediately? Again, that's sending a signal. So using all of that information to really sort of um, optimize your, your site and make sure that it's working as hard as possible for you. Okay, 
finally, free resources. So I've mentioned these already, um, but there's no harm in mentioning them again. So as I say, Canva, fantastic. It's free. Um, there is a pro version, but to be honest, the vast majority, particularly when you're setting it, will be fine with a free version. Um, and it's absolutely wonderful for graphics. It allows you to edit videos and allows you to do loads of personal things as well, like creating invitations, etc. It's fantastic. Hootsuite, again, a really good tool for scheduling, um, and you can schedule across loads of different platforms, um, including LinkedIn. So the, if you Google um, Hootsuite, it will come up with paid options. So do search for the free one. It is there and, um, and it, it works fine. Later, as I say, another uh, free tool for um, scheduling on Instagram, very, very easy to use. And as I say, lots of different free stock photo sites available out there as well. The local enterprise office offer a ton of training courses. They're not all free, but they're extremely cheap and extremely good value for money. And, and they're wonderful, absolutely superb. So I just had a look on the Cork North and West Leo um, website yesterday, and they've got two sort of, they've got an SEO seminar coming up at the end of this month, and they've got website built, what next webinar um, coming up in February. And they're constantly putting up other courses as well. So they do loads of very specific social media courses um, for each of the different platforms. I know they use, um, I've done one on WordPress with them, which was superb. Um, I've done an email marketing one with them, which is also very good. They do blogging courses, they do build your own shop, but they do tons of stuff. So do keep an eye out um, because it's, it's well worth well worth it. And most of these are online at the moment as well. So it makes them very, very accessible for people. And the final piece is, um, if you are setting up a website as well, the local enterprise office also offer what's called the online trading voucher, um, which allows you to basically pay back 50% of the cost up to two and a half grand, assuming that you're doing something in terms of selling online or that, you know, that um, or you're going to have online inquiries or booking system or something on there. Um, it's available to businesses. You have to be in business for six months or more. You have to have 10 or fewer staff and tricky out, you have to have turnover of less than two million. Um, but it's, it's a fantastic um, opportunity for people. The, um, they do offer a training session that you need to attend up front. Um, again, that's online, it's about an hour and a half. And basically somebody will talk you through the application process. Um, once you've got that, then you can go ahead and apply. Um, and then, you, you know, once you've, um, you've got confirmation that you've got it, then you can, you're good to go. And that is where I'm going to leave it. Whistle stop tour. So, Thank you so much, Marie. That was fantastic. Um, as you said in the beginning there, it is overwhelming. There are so many social media platforms to choose from. But as you said, you don't have to be looking at them all and doing them all. Just choose the one for which suits your business, as opposed to, to trying to solve for many. Um, now, we do have a number of questions in. So if you don't mind, I'll go through those questions with you. Uh, so the first lot that we have in is from Gráinne, and she has three questions here. So okay. um, <laughs> what's the ideal length of a video clip if you are posting it on social, bearing in mind that you said, you know, we, our average attention span is eight seconds, I think, one second more than a goldfish, which is extremely short. That's an extremely good question. And I'm not actually sure that there is a definitive answer, Gronia, um, but it, I think it is, it is shorter than... Um, uh, yeah, sort of 30 seconds is, is, to be honest, for a lot of people is absolutely fine. So, and again, it depends on, I suppose, the um, the objective that you've got as well and what you want to get across. But um, yeah, sort of shorter the better, I think is, but it's, it's you know, can you get it, um, you get people's attention and sort of keep their attention, I think is probably the most important thing within a video as well, so. So short and snappy. Um, short so and snappy. Delivers yes. The message and is, I suppose, visual as well, visually absolutely. appealing. Um, how do we measure return on investment of social media campaigns? What's the best way of measuring that? Yeah, there's a, a famous saying, isn't there? I know 50% of my marketing is working, but I don't know which 50%. Um, and it, it, it's a really tricky one because it's, um, there, there's so many other sort of factors at play. The, the key thing, I suppose, is, is just using your insights to really kind of understand, you know, what is working and really sort of pushing that. So, you know, the, the key things that I would look for are reach and engagement. Um, so, you know, what's the sort of the engagement level of a piece of um, activity and how many of my audience are 
am I reaching as a result of that? And then sort of noting, okay, well, actually, what are the, the elements that seem to be consistent in terms of driving engagement and therefore driving reach and really sort of pushing those. So that's, that's what I would sort of focus on more than anything else. Um, and, and I haven't touched on advertising, paid advertising here today. Um, so I suppose the other thing I would um, push as well is, you know, trying to do as much as you possibly can to sort of build your organic reach. So that sort of that free reach, as I said, that's um, with some of the, the, the tips that I shared there earlier. OK, so I think you've touched there on her third question, which is the paid campaigns. Uh, is it worthwhile putting money behind them? Um, uh, so, yeah, so try and push the free. Would that be the... General Certainly advice. when you're starting out, I would absolutely start with the free um, and try and push that as much as possible. And then if you've got something very, very specific that you think, actually, do you know what? I really, really need to get this out to, to more people. Then play around with, um, you know, with advertising. I say play around and that sounds very, very flippant, um, but it is it paid for advertising on, um, on Facebook in particular does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, it's not that it's tricky necessarily, but it, it can be sort of, um, you know, looking at different sort of audiences and stuff like that. There is a little bit of test and learn to, um, to be looking at on that. Um, okay, one from Davidas Marie. Uh, how important are reviews to the end user and algorithms? Are they still relevant and what pl platforms should we choose to collect them yeah so the reviews really do matter absolutely they do um so you know and it's like anything it's reviews are effectively sort of word of mouth um so you know and we're, we're going to believe other people because it's going to be more objective than um you know sort of us, us pushing our own sort of where so um so yeah so do sort of get reviews and and you know they it's not even necessarily capturing um you know you could even ask customers, you know, can I share this? If, if somebody says something nice about your, your business, um, then, you know, sort of you know, getting their, um, they're okay to actually share that on social media and push it out there and, you know, do it in a really kind of human way. Like, oh my God, I'm so touched. This is what a client said to me this morning. Um, it's absolutely made my day. That kind of thing can really, really push, you know, because it shows your human side and it shows the fact that actually you're getting really good feedback. So um, stuff like that really, really does matter. So it doesn't even, as I say, necessarily need to be in an official kind of capacity, um, just sort of ad hoc stuff like that really, really works as well. Um, one from Sharon. Hi Sharon. Uh, what's your view on cold emailing? Do you think it's intrusive and unlikely to yield results? I suppose this ties into in a way LinkedIn Navigator and, um, and targeting um, as you said 80% B2B leads come from LinkedIn. So what's your viewpoint there? Um, it's, it's a very very good question actually. Um, again it, it, it's, it's a different Good one to answer because it's it really does depend on the business um and it depends on how well targeted your um your 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 list is as well so if again again it's kind of, it really does depend on whether you're you're reaching somebody who has going to be have, have a potential interest in what you've got to say so it really again does come back to your sort of target and where you got that sort of um that email lead um it's yeah, it, trying to align what what you're offering and, and getting your target market, you know, irrespective of the um, the platform, that matters more than anything else. I think. Okay. Does that okay. answer your question? And I and I suppose it's it's the intervals that you have in between those emails, and it's the soft approach maybe to begin with, to try and open the door, uh, and then being more targeted maybe Absolutely. thereafter. Um, That's okay. it. Exactly. Uh, That's it. And here's one that I'm completely unfamiliar with, but that's a sign of my age more than anything else. Uh, TikTok, is it a suitable social media platform for professional businesses or who is it most suited to? It's, it's still a very, very young platform. It's one to watch for sure. Um, and it's, it, you know, it's got over a billion users now worldwide. Um, and it's massive in the sort of the, um, the sort of younger age groups and particularly sort of under thirties and stuff. So again, it, it really, really does depend on who you're targeting. If, if you're a target market at the moment is under thirties, then there may well be. So if you're a fashion brand or something like that, then there may well be a very, very strong um, case for it. And there are some sort of fashion brands that are playing around in it now. Um, but it's still very, very <coughs> new in that sort of field. Um, so for, for the vast majority of, of businesses, it's not relevant yet, but it's definitely one to keep an eye on because the age profile is getting 
older and older, I know an awful lot of people in their 40s and 50s who may not be sort of doing TikToks, but they're on there all of the time. So, um, so I think, you know, keep an eye on it. Um, in a few years time, I might be, in a year's time, I might be saying something very, very different. So might be having a TikTok workshop. Absolutely, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Marie, thank you. Thank you so much. That's the end of the questions there. Um, I, I suppose the golden nugget, what I took away was the posting strategy. I loved that. I loved that. Um, but I like structure around whatever I do. So that posting strategy on a weekly or a monthly basis, that really made sense to me and one that I'm definitely going to adopt on my side. Um, I hope everybody here this morning found this really informative. I know I did. So thank you, Marie. Um, it was a great presentation. And as I said at the beginning of this, um, it will be recorded. It will be available on our events page. Uh, just for those that are joined late, um, my name is Fiona Ryan. I'm the Startup and Entrepreneurship Manager here with the Luggate Hub in Skibreen. Um, I've built out a number of support packages for startups, sole traders, entrepreneurs, uh, whether it's a marketing resource, whether it is a free day pass for your startup business to explore the hub here, or whether it is financial or company formation advice, um, please do make contact with me. My, my email is fiona at luggate.ie and I'll talk you through the support packages. 2022 is going to be a great year. If I haven't already said Happy New Year, I'll say it now. Um, and uh, we have many a new project and program coming on board in 2022. So do please uh, stay in touch with Luggate. Keep an eye on our socials because Marie, we're going to have that strategy. We're going to be very structured this year. And, um, and any of those new programs will be uh, relayed there and communicated to our audience. So thanks once again. Thank you, Marie. Thank you to you, the attendees. I hope you do all join us for our next uh, Propeller event, which is on the 24th of February. And that is with Eamon Curtin, who is uh, looking at perfecting your pitch. We'll have a uh, followed by uh, another event, another Propeller uh, event series on the, it's the beginning of March, unsure of the date, um, but the very first week, I think in March, uh, with Hopkins Communication, looking at the communicating styles uh, in business to the various stakeholders. So a great lineup, uh, and I do hope to see um, some of the people here today uh, back in touch for those particular events. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Marie. Thank you so much, Fiona. Thank you, everyone.